How's it going everybody? Rob right here today and we are back with our Anaheim Ducks franchise mode and today guys we are going to be doing the entire playoffs as you guys have requested before. Thank you so much for all your comments and your support on the series. If you are new make sure to subscribe so you can follow along and later this week I've got a brand new series coming for us. Our expansion Jeff draft franchise mode where I will be playing some of the games as well so we'll actually get some live gameplay from me on the sticks. Uh, playing against the AI in this expansion draft franchise mode. I'm really excited to unveil who that's going to be. Also, make sure to leave a like if you guys are going to go on and enjoy this video. Uh, can we get this video to 15 likes? It's the playoffs, guys. Change it up based on my normal style, based on your feedback. If you like it, make sure to let me know. But here we go, guys. As I said, we are going to switch up how we are going to do playoff videos from now on. You guys wanted to see the entire playoffs in one episode. And hopefully... Uh, I'll do more than one series. Um, usually what we used to do is each series was, was its own separate video. Those were quick hitting, like 12, 15 minute videos for you guys. But now we're going to try and speed things up so I won't be going into overtime games or uh, close games at the end unless they're like game seven. Uh, that's really the only time. Or the Western Conference Finals slash Stanley Cup if we make it that far. Um, but this team has got a long way to go if we're going to make the Stanley Cup Finals. These are the lines. Ooh, I like to see McTavish up to an 86. He's grown nicely, but we got Santavori, Zegris, Perot, Krebs, Stroh, McTavish, Comtois, Steel, Vessel, Line, and Gruel, Thomas, Tracy. Now, Perot on this first line definitely helped out quite a bit. Hopefully, with the sim, we can get the plus two to actually factor in. If not, we're going to move Vessel, Line, and probably maybe Strom up, although Strom is the perfect second line center. Probably McTavish then up to the first line center position. Uh, and then rework it there if things start to go awry. Defensively is Chernak with Drysdale, McDonald with Lindholm, Hag with Merkley. We just acquired Hag at the deadline. Also called up Merkley halfway through the season because our previous defensive pairing was not working. Graham Sward is currently scratched. There he is, chilling there. Taking a look one more time here. McDonald and Lindholm have been an absolutely phenomenal pairing this season, so hopefully uh, they can continue to play well. And speaking of hopefully, John Gibson has a good playoff for once. I may have to turn to Lucas Dostal at some point because for the last basically 20 games, John Gibson has been a very, very poor goalie when it comes to the playoffs. So hopefully uh, the team in front of him can play well and uh, we can we can hopefully rely on him from here on out. He was great in the first series last year and then the second series, it was awful. But we are taking on the Seattle Kraken as the first time we are seeing them and Tristan Trevelyan. Uh, is their number one player. He's an 84 overall X-Factor, 52 points, 20 goals. Or, yeah, Strom and then Radulov, Clayton Keller, Ryan Johansson, Anthony Mantha, Jaden Schwartz, Andrew Kopp, and Cole Lind, James Van Riemsdyk, Rasmus Asplund, and Morgan Geeky. So, not a tremendously strong forward core. Heck, I think our first three lines are better than this forward core. Their defensive core is not much better with Noah Hannafin and Scott Mayfield as their number one pairing, Jamie Alexiak and Ryan O'Rourke. And then Mario Ferraro and Vince Dunn. So it's not a bad defensive core. Don't get me wrong. This is pretty average, standard, right? It's not very impressive, though. We should handle this team quite well, although they did finish in a divisional spot. Their goaltender being X-Factor, Philip Grubauer, had a tremendous season for them. Uh, in previous playoffs, he's also been tremendous. Um, somehow, they, oh, wow. That's you See, that's the kind of stats I need out of John Gibson. But... Let's get into this one, guys. I don't want to make this video two hours long for you. Let's jump in. First game of the playoffs in season number five here, 2026. Let's go. Game one against the Seattle Kraken. This is exciting. This is the first time we really get to see the Kraken. First period, and it's one-to-one. -one. Veselainen on the third line, and Strom on their first line gets them a goal. It's 1-1, one -one, but the shots are in our favor. Second period, it's another 1-1 period with Veselainen scoring, but Clayton Keller now scores for Seattle. And we're into the third period in a 2-2 game in which we do have the lead in shots. A solid game for John Gibson so far. I don't want to jinx it. We need to rely on him. We need to put another one past Grubauer with 30-plus shots. We should have a third goal at least by now, but we give Seattle a power play. We do kill it off and with two minutes to go, one minute, there are no late goals. We're going into overtime here, guys. And I'm not going to jump in because we're doing the entire playoffs right now. We get a power play in overtime, and we cannot capitalize on it. 
40. We're encroaching on 50 shots. Give Seattle a power play. It's a long one. Are they going to capitalize? No, they're not. Okay, with five minutes to go in the first overtime, are we going to hit 50 shots before double overtime? No, as Andrew Kopp seals the deal. 3-2 victory for Seattle. And their best line was Hannafin and Mayfield. Their top defensive pairing absolutely dominated us. And our worst line was Krebs, Chernak, Drysdale, Strom. Wow, so that second line was Zegras, Santavori was a minus one as well. You really hate to see that. But a 3-2 overtime loss in which we peppered him with shots. That one is all about Philip Grubauer. He absolutely carried them in that game. Veselainen on the third line. Nice to see him scoring some goals, though. Another game on home ice. We do have to bounce back in this one. This is a big game. We cannot go down 0-2 with having home ice advantage. We just completely would waste it then. First period. All right, there we go. Maxime Comtois, who I believe is on that third line as well. So the third line doing quite well for us early in this series. Second period. Perot scores on the first line early, but Strom gets Seattle back to within one. And again, Santavori scoring. I was going to say, again, a good showing from Grubauer, but we finally get that third goal past him. But Cole Lynn bounces back and Mayfield bounces back as John Gibson has absolutely choked away this lead that we had we had a two goal lead and we can't score on the power play now it is three to three and with five and a half four minutes to go three minutes to go two minutes to go one and a half 30 seconds it's another overtime game guys and they didn't even hit 20 shots in regulation yet they scored three goals and they weren't on the power play speaking of power play seattle gets one we do kill it and there we go Braden tracy on the fourth line is gonna get us an overtime goal four three final Taking a quick look at the stats, Jamie Drysdale and Chernak bouncing back, but Krebs, Krebs again, another minus two. You really hate to see Krebs with all them minuses, really. Uh, what is that, a minus four through two games and they've only scored five? Yeah, I'm sorry, but he's. I'm gonna drop him down there. We're gonna play Veselainen on that second line because Veselainen's earned it straight up. He's just earned it on that second line. Leads the team in points, two goals in the first game. Uh, one point in that last game. John Gibson, close to being pulled. Honestly, I'm this close to pulling him. One rough period. It's what it is. What it is is I can't blame him for the overtime game. You know that one was basically four full periods where he played pretty well. But now we just got a chance here in game number three. First period, we're up one nothing with Santavori getting an early one for us from the high slot. Basically the point. Second period, oh my goodness, a lot of goals in that period, but we're coming out of it 3-3. So McDonald got his first career playoff goal, which is good for him, but then Radulov on the power play, Strom and Alexiak, followed by a Zegris goal there to get us back tied at three. Shots are about even, and Van Riemsdyk scores on Gibson again, but Sam Steele scores on Grubauer. There we go, a 4-4 game. We get a power play, and Mason McTavish scores on the power play. It keeps going, and Peyton Krebs scores. Lindholm scores, and it's 7-4 here, guys. Krebs finally stepping in, no longer a negative on the team, a net negative. He's a positive for us. Dylan Strom is going to get one. Holy smokes, what an outpouring of goals. 37 shots, 8 goals. We finally chase Grubauer from the net after seven, and that's going to be all she wrote. Eight to four is your final. Taking a look at the pluses and the minuses, Krebs was a plus one. Only Chernak and Drysdale were minuses. John Gibson with another bad. You know what, guys? I'm I'm done. I'm done waiting around uh, for this. We're going to go ahead and go to settings real quick and turn off auto rotate goalies just because I do not want the AI switching the goalies on me. Um, it should be somewhere. Where is it? Uh, auto rotates goalies. No edit lines. Returning. Auto rotate goalies off. There it is. Okay. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to play the goalies that we want to play. In this next game here against Seattle, look at Zegras. Six points in three games. One goal, five assists. That's doing what he was born to do. Uh, but John Gibson, like guys, this is, this is typical playoffs. John Gibson. Eight eighties and then upper twos in goal against average. I'm gonna bench him for Lucas Dostal. I just, I know Dostal did not play well in his couple games, but he came in in relief. So we're going into Seattle up two to one with making a goaltending change. We're gonna see how it pays off. Shorter leash for Dostal because I know what I'm getting out of Gibson. Hopefully we can have a good game here from Dostal and he can win the starting job uh, at least for the playoffs right now. First period, Seattle starts out 1-0 on five shots. Really not what you want to see. 
Second period. Oh, God. Oh, no. Dostal, three goals against on 16 total shots. We've 30 shots and have yet to score a goal. Honestly, I don't think there's much Dostal could do about this one. I mean, probably save a few more. I mean, we just got to beat Grubauer. I mean, after eight, oh, God. And yeah, Asplund, I mean, he's made 16 saves on 20 shots. That is an 800% that's an 800 save percentage. That's an 80% save percentage. That is brutal. I mean, over 40 shots. Grubauer has absolutely stealing, stolen this game uh, for the uh, Seattle Kraken. And they're back to even in this series. And the uh, Perot, minus three. Hate to see that. But he's been playing well. So I can't really complain. Um, I got I to gotta bench Dostal. That just, that's just too poor of an effort there. I mean, Dostal, 4.00 goal against average. Gibson, get back in the net, buddy. We're back on home ice. It's now a best of three series. Tied 2-2. This is a big one on home ice. We This is why we wanted home ice advantage. This is why like the regular season does matter that little bit. Is you got to win your games, get your home ice advantage. And now in this best two out of three, we got two chances at home. First period, early power play. Getting an early goal is Gruel and Santavori scoring. Santavori from center ice and Gruel from inside the net. Um, but a good performance there from Gibson. Uh, allowing zero goals on 10 shots. Very, very good to see that. Second period. Okay, so a little bit worse, but we do get a goal to stay ahead by one. Two goals on 20 shots. That's a flat 900 save percentage. It's just not good, guys. It's just straight up neither goalie is playing well. We have a third period, though, up by one. What we need now is more offense because we can't rely on defense. Uh, although two goals against through two periods should be good. Can we? If we can get a fourth goal, I'll feel very happy. I am very happy. As I say that, Santavori scores on the power play. We have a two-goal advantage with seven minutes to go. We have a five-on-three power play that we can't capitalize. But 30 shots now for Seattle and a good game. You know what? I woke up John Gibson. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's that's what that means. Uh, Sam Steele, Krebs, Comtois was a minus two. But you know what? Those guys are a third line that can produce, but they can also get kind of scored on. But a really, really good game there for Gibson. Very, very happy with that one. And we are now one game away from advancing into the second round of the playoffs here in year number five, 2026. On the road in Seattle, John Gibson is still in net. I'm not going away from him after he's woken up in that last one. A good game. Can he continue for us? First period. All right. He does continue only facing six shots. So we've been really good at shot suppression. Uh, but we've been pumping shots on net. I mean, a ton of shots on net. Uh, and it's just Grubauer is playing really well, minus that one game. Second period, and Seattle gets the lead. One goal on 20 shots. Vince Dunn scoring for the Seattle Kraken. It's a tight one, though. It's 1-0 as Mason McTavish scores on the early power play. And Trevor Zegers follows it right up on the very next shift. 2-1 to Anaheim. 3-1 to the Anaheim Ducks as Sam Steele scores quickly on the power play. And we finally start to break through that Grubauer wall. Seattle trying to do the same against Gibson's wall. Two and a half minutes to go. They get a power play. We are going to kill it off and advance into round number two of the playoffs. Love to see that. The semifinals of the Western Conference. Uh, Veselin and Strom, Hag, Drysdale. You know what? Fine with that. Uh, how did Gibson... Gibson played a really good game. Yeah, 969 in a 100 goal against average. I will take that for sure. Santavori with four goals, four assists. Man, if he does that... Uh, you know, uh, for the rest of the playoffs, you know, eight, have 16 points through 12 games or something like that. That's going to be really, really good for us. And taking a look across the league, the Vancouver Canucks have been eliminated by the Dallas Stars. Colorado Avalanche knock off the Sharks. And then the Coyotes sweep the Chicago Blackhawks. The Coyotes are going to be one tough team to face. But we are facing the Dallas Stars. Not going to change a single thing here, guys. Not going to touch a thing. Taking a look at what the Dallas Stars have. They've got Robertson, Larkin, and Buchnevich. Two X-Factors on that top line is going to be tough. And Tyler Sagan, Rube Hintz, and Kevin LeBanc. Wow, another X-Factor there. But then their bottom six does fall off. They have X-Factor Wyatt Johnson uh, with quick pick. Colin White, who's actually pretty good. And then Alex Tuck on the fourth line. You know what? I can't even say that it falls off because they could switch this all around and it would be a looking a lot better. But... 
that top six is pretty nasty with those X factors. And their defensive core has M Miro Heiskanen. I mean, I, I get, say what you want about the rest not being that great. Miro Heiskanen, like, being that good is dangerous. Because, you, yeah, you can see here this middle pairing of Essel and Dell and Stiegenthaler is the line to take advantage of. Yeah, that third line and the fourth line. I told you guys the bottom six was not going to be good for them. They're really not seeming to beat teams by a lot. Igor Shostyrkin with 906 and a 360. That's not that good either. Uh, we know John Gibson started to bounce back in the three games after uh, I benched him. So, very was it two games after I benched him? Yeah, it was two games. We only played two games after I benched him. But here we go. Round number two against the Dallas Stars, having home ice advantage yet again, is going to be hopefully advantageous, as, we, as I just said. First period, game one on home ice. We're up to nothing. Akil Thomas gets his first goal as an Anaheim Duck in the postseason. Could be his first postseason goal ever. Don't know, but Sam Steele also follows it up. The guy just loves to score goals in the playoffs. Second period, 3 nothing as Mason McTavish scores on Shesterkin in the second period as we, holy smokes, we are just shooting a ton. Look at that. We're almost at 40 shots halfway through the third period. A power play goal there for Dylan Larkin, and the power play does expire. So a long power play, they only get one. That's what we want to see. With six minutes to go, though, we're up by two. 43 shots to 30 shots. A lot of shots. Uh, just a ton of shots back and forth. But that's good for John Gibson's save percentage because he only allowed one goal. Beautiful. There's nothing checked there. Three goals. I will take it. Contributions from everywhere. First line was a little quiet, but I'll take it. As long as that the oppos opposing first line isn't dominating us even strength, I'll be okay. <clears throat> Here we go, guys. Game number two. On home ice, can we take a 2-0 lead? I would love to see that instead of dropping home ice advantage. First period, no goals scored. Dallas does outshoot us. That's the first time in a little while that I can remember us being thoroughly outshot uh, after at the end of a period. Second period, doesn't matter. Comtois scores and Jamie Drysdale. The shots are still in Dallas's favor. Man, John Gibson is playing well, but he does slip up a little bit there. A one-goal game. Jason Roberts at 18-36 in the period. We're kind of trailing in shots by a lot, and Kukin makes it a 2-2 game with plenty of time for anything to happen. It would be great to see us put some offense up. Dallas gets a long power play. John Gibson comes to the rescue. We're headed to overtime, being outshot by 10. This has been a Dallas heavy game power plays for both teams. Dallas's is a lot longer. They can score on it. Love to see that. Halfway through overtime here, Dallas is over 45 shots. We just hit 30. What a game for Dallas. They came out firing pucks on net, but John Gibson is ready for it. There we go, guys. We're going into a second overtime. Almost 50 shots for Dallas. Double overtime. Are we going to get an early one? Are we going through an entire another period? We get an early one, but it is Alex Tuck. Finally, the 52nd shot of the game beats him. I can't really be too upset about that. Offense just didn't perform. 942 and a 214. I can't get upset about that whatsoever. Uh, here we go. Heading on the road out east from Anaheim to Dallas, Texas. On the road, can we steal one back on the road that would give us home home ice advantage back? Would be great. A long game. Will the travel affect us? And will the uh, long game affect us as well? First period. Doesn't look like it. We jump out early. First line stepping up when we need them to. Shots are back in our favor. Love to see that. Second period. Tracy scoring again. And we have outshot them by 10 Heading into the third period, we get a power play opportunity. We cannot extend the lead to four, but we have a three-goal lead. And with 10 minutes to go in this third period, LeBanc does get one back for Dallas, pulls it back to a two-goal game. We get a power play. Can we extend it back to a three-goal lead? We cannot. With three minutes to go, two minutes, just need to keep shutting that door. Gibson, Stiegenthaler scores, and that's going to hurt because that's going to make his save percentage look a lot worse than it could have been. 926, it could have been in the 940s, guys. It would have been ridiculously good. But Trevor Zegers now with 10 points uh, in nine games. That's good to see us. You know, we're scoring like three goals a game. Three, two, three in this series. Really, whatever team scores the three goals is looking like it's going to win that game. So we got a big one here, though. Could extend it to a 3-1 lead. They've only been able to nip us in overtime. Can we extend our series advantage to 3-1? 
First period. Nobody's scoring. We do have the advantage in shots, though. I like to see my team put up offense. Second period. One to one. Larkin scores on Gibson, but McTavish scores on Shestirkin. Still have the advantage in shots there. One goal apiece in the second period. The next goal is going to be absolutely massive. Who will get it? So far, Dallas has claimed the lead in shots. They've been the more offensive team here in the third period, but a power play for us. We get scored on shorthanded. That is a massive momentum swing for Dallas. And then they get another goal with Robertson there as Dallas is going to win game four, three to one. And there go my hopes of a 3-1 series lead. We're back to a best of three. Maybe I do need to move Perot off that top line. <coughs> Maybe I do. I'm not sure. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, Perot, minus four. Good God. Uh, and then Dylan Strom's a minus four. Best of line. And I, I'm going to move him up for sure. Perot down for uh, Krebs. I just think Perot at a minus. I just think he's over his head. Uh, yeah, the top. It's it's just we're getting heavily scored on at even strength uh, with our top, top players. I got to put all the, my best goal scorers that I can up at the top there in a best of three where we have home ice advantage. Hopefully those line changes pay dividends and don't come back to bite me. So let's see here, guys. Hopefully the team bounces back in front of the hometown crowd. First period, nothing, nothing. Still have the lead in shots, though. I'm pretty happy with that. Second period, 1-1. One, one. Santa Vuori's going to score on the power play, but Miles Wood answers with just a few seconds left in the period and ties it at one apiece, heading into a crucial third period. The next goal, like I said last time, is going to be huge, and it's Zegras on the power play. Getting your Anaheim Ducks the lead as the shots are even. They're going back and forth up at the same time. We now have taken a nice slight lead, but there it goes. The shots are even. What a tight game. And with five minutes to go, is somebody going to be a hero or is it going to be a goaltending duel? It's a goaltending duel. And our goaltender, John Gibson, steps up when we needed him to. 960 and a one goal against. I mean, he only faced 25 shots, right? I mean, the first line was a minus with Zegris, Veselainen, Gruel. I mean, it looks like they got caught us on a line change with the second defensive pairing. Um, that's not too worrisome, especially because it was the only goal given up in the game. We have a chance to seal the deal again in game six on the road. A very defensive series after an offensive series in the last one. Who's going to come out on top? Dallas has their backs against the wall. First period, it's one to one. They score early, but McTavish gets that answer right before the first period ends. They have severely outshot us by six in a period. That's a lot of shots. Second period, and there's their three goals to our one. There's the shots. They are peppering Gibson with shots, and they are scoring. Down by two now. Tracy did keep us in this one a little bit. It was 3-2 at that point. Larkin got them a fourth goal, getting them two goal advantage back. A huge power play goes begging as we cannot come back and cut the lead to within one. Have this lead. Two minutes, two goals in two minutes. Will we be able to do it? I severely doubt it. We're going into a game number seven. Wow, Santavori, oh, Vessel, oh, God, that that first line is just getting absolutely brutalized. Is there a great plus minus, like McTavish, would McTavish complement this well? I mean, there we go. I mean, that would help, right? Um, he's the only plus, really, on, the, I mean, besides this, the third and fourth line, of, Jesus. Uh, minus two, yeah, minus three, zero. Is Hags a minus three? Ah! Anyway, we're going to move McTavish up there. Both teams, whoo, high pressure situation here. I don't really care about central scouting right now. I do care about game seven on home ice. Both teams have played very defensive. Will it be more of the same here in game seven or is one of the teams gonna play loose? First period, two nothing lead to the Dallas Stars after one. Oh, that's not, I'm little, I'm, I'm very worried now, guys. I'm very, very worried. Second period, and I have a right to be worried as nobody scores in period number two. And now in period number three, we have a two-goal disadvantage. Five minutes in, Stiegenthaler is going to score to make it a 3-0 Dallas Stars lead. Halfway through the period, we've shown no signs of life. Absolutely no pulse or fight or desire from this Anaheim Ducks team. Even on the power play, we can't do anything. 
And that's how this playoff run is going to end. Another round two exit. Guys, I feel like I got to start jumping in in these third periods. <laughs> I know I don't, uh, you guys probably don't want to see me play, but like at the same time, I want to play because it's so much fun and I've really enjoyed this team and I'd love to just jump in there. You guys let me know what you think about that, but holy shit, was this a bad post. I mean, Zegris minus seven. I mean, nobody was a plus besides the fourth line. Everybody sucked. And I mean, I know I said Gibson bounced back. That's a good, that's a good statistical. Like that's good. That's not bad. That's compared to his previous seasons. 236 is great. 921 is great. Just the team couldn't, they couldn't put it all together when it mattered. But that is the end of this episode, guys. I hope you like this new format. Let me know if next year I should jump in in these elimination games where we're losing, not winning, but only losing and elimination games. You guys let me know what you think about that idea. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the next one.